Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Lord God, make us worthy to enter your house with diligence, to knock at your door with confidence, and to worship you in your sanctuary with sincerity. Answer us with kindness and respond to our petitions from the treasury of your mercy. Then we shall glorify you with joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your merciful love. According to your great compassion, Blot out my transgressions. Wash me completely from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My transgressions truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Yes, you delight in the sincerity of heart. In secret you teach me wisdom. Cleanse me with this up and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Restore in me the joy of your salvation. Sustain in me a willing spirit. I will teach transgressors your ways, that sinners may return to you. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the chalice of salvation which was filled on Golgotha. O sinners drank from it, and they were pardoned with the blood of forgiveness that poured forth from the cross. All people were marred and escaped death. As this chalice united to his holy body will be blessed and consecrated for the pardon of faults and the forgiveness of sins for his flock, we raise glory and honor to the good one on this day and all the days of our lives and forever. O Christ, in your great and unspeakable love for all people, you became our sacrifice on Golgotha. By offering yourself, you pardoned the sin of the world. You enabled weak and sinful people to receive your body and life-giving blood. You have made us worthy of offering you acceptable sacrifices 
in memory of your saving passion and your glorious resurrection. You have given us this sign for the purification of our souls and bodies. With the prophet David we cry out and say, I shall receive the chalice of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. O merciful Lord, we now implore your goodness to consecrate this chalice mixed with wine and with water through the holiness of its union to your sacred body. May it become a chalice of thanksgiving and salvation for all those who drink from it and are purified. May it become a chalice which is a pledge of new life for us. May it become a chalice which unites us to the guest of your banquet. May it become a chalice which opens to us the gates of your heavenly kingdom. May it forgive our faults and pardon our sins. Through it may we share with the faithful departed in the joy which will never end. We raise our voices to thank you, O Christ, and through and with you, your Father and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Of angels stood in awe 
and in fear beheld the sight. With great honor Joseph took our Lord's body from the cross. So strengthen your drooping hands and your weak knees. Make straight for your feet, that what is lame may not be dislocated, but healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for that holiness without no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one be deprived of the grace of God, that no bitter root spring up and cause trouble, through which may many become defiled, and that no one be an immoral or profane person like a soul who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that later, when he wanted to inherit his father's blessing, he was rejected because he found no opportunity to change his mind, even though he sought the blessing with tears. You have not approached that which could be touched, and a blazing fire and a gloomy darkness, and a storm and a trumpet blast, and a voice speaking words, such that those who heard beg that no message be further addressed to them, for they could not bear to hear the command, even if an animal touches this mountain, it shall be stoned. Indeed, so fearful was the spectacle that Moses said, I am terrified and tremble. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not wish the bodies to be left upon the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and they broke the legs of the first and the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear and at once blood and water came forth. And he who saw this has testified so that you also may believe and his testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled, not one of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they shall look upon the one whom they have pierced. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. When our Lord dies on Calvary, He in effect shatters the humanity that He has received from His Father in the Incarnation. And this is linked to the rending of the veil at the time of his death on Calvary. As you know, in the temple, there were always two places. There was the holy place and there was the holy of holies. And these two sections of what originally was a tent. 
But the Holy of Holies held the Ark of the Covenant and on occasion would have a manifestation of what we call the Shekinah, the presence. And the Holy of Holies represented the place where God resided among his people. And so even after the temple destructions that took place prior to our Lord's coming and the rebuilding of the temple and the loss of the Ark, that space, even though it was empty at the time of our Lord, was still retaining that same signification of the presence of God. But of course, in the incarnation, the true presence of God personally has now come into the earth. And our Lord's presence, the divine word incarnate, that presence of God is among us. So that what our Lord is doing in order to show us that his presence, the divine presence, the personal presence, not just God who creates the world, but the divine intimacy, that that presence is now made available to all of humanity through the rending of the veil, through the opening of the Holy of Holies, and that exposing. And so our Lord, St. Paul will say in his letter to the Hebrews, becomes a living veil. So the veil that is torn is linked with that shattering of our Lord's nature upon Calvary. So that the personal presence of God is open to all who believe, who are consecrated, who baptize, they have access to our Lord, access to the personal. And so our Lord's shattering on Calvary, his death is not just a misfortune. It's a misfortune from a human angle of the betrayal by Judas and of the infidelity of all the people who surround him except his mother. Because even with Mary Magdalene and with St. John present at the cross, they're not there because they believe. They're there for perfectly legitimate reasons, but they don't believe that our Lord is going to rise from the dead. They're there because he's a friend, and this is a horrible tragedy, and this is sad. The only one who stands at Calvary and believes in the resurrection and the new creation and the transformation that will take place is the mother of God. And so this reality of our Lord shattering his nature on Calvary is to allow us then ourselves to receive this transfigured humanity in the divine Eucharist as the living veil that is what gives us access to the divinity. It is the substantial presence of our Lord's personal being given to us, inviting us to enter into the life of the Trinity. This is central to the whole gospel. This is central to the work of redemption, which is why our Lord says, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you cannot have life within you. The Eucharist is something that is absolutely essential to salvation. It is not an extra. Reading of the Bible is great but it will not bring you salvation in itself. You must have contact with the personal presence of the divine Eucharist with our Lord, or else he would not have said, not only once in Capernaum, you must eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, or you'll not have life within you. Not only does he say it, he repeats it again and again and again in the sermon, of Saint, uh, sermon in Capernaum at the synagogue. This is why our commemoration on the Thursday of the Divine Mysteries, the Eucharist that is consecrated on that day, is the Eucharist that is returned this day to receive in communion at the signing of the chalice and this anaphora. Because they are linked. It's not because simply, well, we don't have a Mass, and so we have to have the Eucharist, so we'll bring it from last night. No, it is because theologically and metaphysically and mystically, it is intrinsically connected and that is why it is brought back in procession to be received, because it is the body that died on Calvary, it is the living veil, it is the contact that we have with the personal presence of God. And this is why when we receive grace, we use this word all the time, all grace is marked both with life, with resurrection, and all grace is marked with the cross, from the moment of our Lord's incarnation, as the Word made flesh, his whole destiny is to move to that death upon Calvary. It's why he calls it his hour. This is why I have come into the world. 
And his entrance then, from the very moment of the conception within the womb of Mary of Nazareth, our Lord's tendency and his whole movement is towards that death on Calvary, and of course, subsequently, the resurrection. But as man, his entire life is marked by the cross. And because our Lord is God, not just simply a man who happens to be holy, it means from the very moment of our Lord's conception, he has in front of his eyes, at all times, every detail that will take place to him in the Passion. And he sees this throughout his entire life. When he meets Judas for the first time, he knows exactly what's going to happen with Judas. And so this great mystery, this grace that we receive from our Lord, and there is no other grace outside of Christ. St. John says, from his fullness we have all received. You are only saved through Christ or you are not saved at all. It means that that gift that is given to us of that personal presence is always marked both with the goal of resurrection, but it also means that it is marked by the cross. And the greater that a person receives that grace from God, the more that their life is marked by the cross. It is why with the beautiful lives of someone like Padre Pio or Rita of Cascia or Vravka, they show in its fullest reality what grace truly does in our lives. Grace is there to bring us resurrection, but grace is marked by the cross. It does not make our life easy. It is meant to wean us out of this world and to dispose our lives to be able to receive this personal life of the living reality, which is the person of God. And so there are many things that take place when we commemorate the death. This anaphora that we use this morning is by many liturgists considered to be the most ancient liturgy that we have of any church, east or west, of any documentation that we have. And it reflects, it's one of the reasons it has, it is very much linked to the liturgy, the anaphora that is used by the Church of the Chaldeans in Mesopotamia. And as the Maronites are not just simply Western Syriac, but they are also influenced Western Syriac and Eastern Syriac, this liturgy is central to what we do. And so on this day when we have the procession, understand what we are doing when the Blessed Sacrament is brought back. It is linking us to the supper of our Lord of the Last Supper, that in the prayers that we had last night are that you, by fulfilling the law and receiving the Passover lamb, became our Passover lamb, our Paschal lamb, and that is my body, that is my blood that you receive of the new covenant. And so there's a very profound and many great riches to be contemplated on this day of silence. Good Friday is meant to be a day of silence. No one should be at work on this day. I remember that when I was in, worked for years in the very center of atheistic, modern, naturalistic, political life, Geneva. Geneva, Geneva, because of its Calvinistic background, Good Friday is still a public holiday. And even in the midst of their infidelity and apostasy, every single thing is closed on Good Friday. That is something left over from a past, but it is exactly the way things should be. So that we can take this day of silence and meditate upon not just death, but of gift, the gift that transforms, that is what grace is. And so by all means, let us use this day, focus in the prayers, contrition, examination of conscience and prepare ourselves so once again this evening when we come back, we know exactly why we are present to celebrate, to commemorate the death and burial of our Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So there will be a collection taken today for the Holy Lands. It is the traditional collection that we have for the lands in which that word incarnate tread the grounds, always in distress, always in difficulty, because the place where most grace has entered the world is the one marked greatest by the cross. And so on Good Friday, we do the collections that is sent to the Patriarchate to be used in the Holy Lands.
Itelot madem heida loho, alot aloho dem hade tayu, Rainer silvot aibuta oke ulal baitoch veskude paye klo, hot kude and security of your entire flock, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us give the greeting of peace to 
our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. solid rock which flows the twelve rivers from the twelve tribes of Israel. May the Lord God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and the indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Make us worthy to raise and adore you, Almighty Father, your glorious Son and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of God, the Almighty Father, the security of the Son who governs all, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, who sanctifies and who pardons all, be with us and among us all the days of our lives, with this altar and our offering, and with your church and her children, now and forever. sun clothed itself with morning and rocks, melted away when they witnessed the Lord of creation hanging on the cross. Lord, have mercy. We present this for commemoration and this prayer and the everlasting God, the Ancient of Days for the living, and for the dead, for those who are far, and for those who are near, for the churches, monasteries, and convents, in every district region, and for us who are weak and sinful. Though we are unworthy, you have made us worthy to stand before you, to be remembered in your heavenly kingdom. We pray for those whom we remember this day and for those who are with us in faith, awaiting your abundant mercy for our fathers and mothers, for our brothers and sisters, and for sinners we present this pure and holy offering to you, O God the Father, Almighty Lord. It is right and just. Yes, O Lord, it is truly right and just that our minds and hearts be always lifted up to the heights. They are lifted up to you, O God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, glorious and holy King forever. To you, O God of Abraham, Savior of Isaac, Comforter of Jacob, glorious and holy King forever, it is right and it is just to thank, adore, and praise you. To the Father, send the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. O Lord, sign us with your holy cross, and make us worthy of your feast when you will appear in glory. Extend the right hand of your mercy over this place, and over all its faithful inhabitants. Guard them with your victorious cross from the evil one and his power. Glory be to you, O Lord, our God. In the presence of these divine mysteries, we proclaim. Kyrie. Lord, 
Glory to you, O praiseworthy and glorious name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You created the world in your grace, and its inhabitants in your love and compassion. You saved all people by your mercy, and you have given your grace to mortal beings. Heavenly beings without number worship your divinity. Beings of light and spirit praise you. Cherubim and seraphim bless and sanctify you. O Lord, by your grace make us worthy to say with them. Holy, 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 mighty Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your great glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who has come and will come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. Blessed are you, O fruit of the Holy Spirit, gathered from the blessed vine of Mary, pressed out in the sterile city of Jerusalem, and mixed in the chalice of salvation, and offered for the Holy Church. Those prayer who pressed it were scattered, and they were prevented from drinking from it. But those who drink it rejoice and sing praises. O most holy one, allow us to approach these holy mysteries and accomplish this Eucharist of the saving passion of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we remember his death, proclaim his resurrection, and complete his entire mystery of salvation with true thanksgiving. For your living and holy name is blessed and worthy of all praise, now and forever. Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. our faith in you and we ask you have compassion on us O God have mercy on us and hear us O God Lord God remember Mary and through her pure and holy prayers have mercy and compassion on us and answer us how awesome is this moment O my beloved for the living Holy Spirit Sends and rests upon this Eucharist to consecrate it. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. mysteries may we observe your commandments and be justified before your throne make us worthy to spend all the days of our lives without confusion distress or trouble through your grace and the assistance of your blessed father 
May we please you, may we please you by doing good. For this reason we implore and we glorify you, O God our Father, your only Son, Savior of all, and your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. pray and we implore you, O Lord God, at this solemn and holy moment, for our fathers who lead us in this life, and for those who govern the Church, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bashar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops of the true faith, we pray to you, O Lord. Remember all true and faithful Christians, our brothers and sisters who have asked us, weak though we are, to pray for them. We remember those who are subject to difficulties and to take refuge in you. Visit and deliver them. We pray for this place which God guards and for the peace and spiritual growth of those who live here, and that they may live in prosperity. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember all true Christian leaders who have built churches, monasteries, and convents in all parts of the world. We pray for all Christians in their public activities and services, the clergy, and all of the faithful, that they may lead holy lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with her we remember the prophets, apostles, evangelists, disciples, martyrs and confessors, John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner of the Savior, Stephen the archdeacon and first martyr, and all the saints. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We remember those who have died and are among the saints especially those who have, pres who have preserved and given us this apostolic faith. We proclaim the four holy ecumenical councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, Ephesus, and Chalcedon. We remember our glorious fathers and faithful doctors of the church who dwell with God, St. James, brother of the Lord, the illustrious apostle, martyr, and bishop, Ignatius, Dionysus, Athanasius, Basil, Gregory, Timothy, Euthatius, John, and especially Cyril, the Tower of Truth, the Chosen of God, St. Marin, our Blessed Father, St. James and St. Ephraim, both pillars of our Holy Church, and for all those who kept the true faith and passed it on to us, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. We also remember all the faithful who have died in the true faith and who dwell with you. We implore Christ our Lord who has called them to pardon their sins and their faults and to lead them and us to his heavenly kingdom, we proclaim three times. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie Spirit may be revealed to us from the heights of your holiness. May the Holy Spirit rest upon this chalice to bless and to consecrate it by the mystery of your holy trinity. 
May this chalice pardon the death, pardon the debts, and remit the sins of all who receive it. May they be worthy of this chalice, reserved for the blessed and everlasting feast. For they will praise your glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever.
for the pardon of her children. Behold, the holy chalice from it we receive salvation. From it we drink and are made worthy of the pardon of our faults. Behold, today is accomplished through the ministry of the true priests that all nations are saved. Behold, the chalice, King David foretold it, stating, I will receive the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Behold, today it is completed on the table of life that mortals are promised eternal life. O Lord, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. But through the priesthood you have made us worthy to stand before you and to present this offering to your holy name. The cherubim and seraphim who were created to serve you dare not approach you. Isaiah, I have witnessed a seraph lifting a coal with tongs from the altar to his lips. You have shown us your great mercy when you lowered your horself, and in your love you came down to the level of our weakness. Lord Jesus Christ, may your holy cross be a guard against the evil one and his power forever. Amen. O Lord, purify us from every stain of soul and body, that we may be united to you in purity and holiness. You have loved us, and you have brought us back to you, that we may stand before you and call upon you with the pure and holy prayer you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord, we ask you through your grace, to place your truth in our hearts, your love in our consciences, and your mercy within our souls. May we share in your kingdom with the guest of your feast, clothed with your body, the white robe of joy. Having conquered Gehenna, and having been delivered from death, let us dwell in your light with all the saints. We raise glory to the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Kolochuna. Lord, we bow our heads before you, before your forgiving altar, and before the body.
body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and we worship the glorious Trinity, and we ask you, through your grace, through your love, compassion, and mercy, and the compassion, forgiveness of our sins. Hear our prayers and be attentive to our petitions. Answer our requests from the abundant treasury of your mercy. Make us worthy to come forward in all purity and holiness, to receive the body and blood of your beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And we shall praise the glorious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Holy gifts for the holy, with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life.
We give you thanks, O living Lamb of God. You came down to earth from heaven, clothe yourself with the body of our humanity, and died for the life and salvation of all people. Prophets and kings yearned to see you, but were unable. <clears throat> Yet you led us, weak sinners, receive you in our human hands and to be purified by you. We praise you for your awesome majesty and for your goodness toward us. You are the burning fire carried by our hands and the living ember touched by our lips. Purify, O oh Lord, the mouths, the lips, and the hands of those who have held your body. Sanctify the bodies, souls, and spirits of those who have received your blood. Purify their hearts, their thoughts, their spirits, and all their senses. Mark them with the seal of your cross, and place within them your hidden power. O Lord our God, to you be glory, now and forever. Amen. Shlomo el Kulukun. May God bless, sanctify, Forgive and protect all the faithful who have participated in this divine sacrifice of the holy mysteries. May God forgive them, their brethren, their brothers and sisters, and their departed. May God save us from confusion and shame before him on the day of judgment forever and ever. Amen.